18th century Belfast developed from the Castle Street, High Street area, up the Falls Road axis, main Catholic axis of Belfast, up the Shank Hill Road, the main Protestant axis, West Belfast, North Belfast, and then in East Belfast, which developed around the shipyards, we've got a mainly Protestant working class area, Bally Macarrat, but within it, a small Catholic enclave, the Short Strand. There's a counterpart to that in West Belfast, which is predominantly Catholic, Falls Road, Glen Road, Andersonstown. Then in North Belfast, which is a patchwork of Protestant areas, Catholic areas, closely intermingled, you've got the Catholic Ardoin area, divided from Upper Ardoin or Glen Bryn by the Alliance Avenue. And up this road is the Holy Cross School that was the subject of demonstrations. And then in South Belfast, we've got Ballinafay, which is a mixed area, mixed Protestant and Catholic, mixed in terms of class, mixed in terms of students and more permanent residents and so forth. This area was the original heart of the city, Castle Street, High Street, and it developed mainly in the 19th century with industrialisation out from this core area. The Falls Road area developed from a small nucleus around a Catholic church which was built in the 1780s with support from the local Presbyterians who went on to help establish the United Irishmen. They were very radical at that point in time. From this developed the main Catholic sector of the city, which developed out from the centre, up Diva Street and up the Falls Road. Here we've got the Shankill Road and the Falls Road, Falls area, Springfield Road. And joining them is Lanark Way, which has got a big gate in the middle, and the gate was closed for most during most of the troubles. And there's a peace wall separating the Shankill area from the Falls area, so-called peace wall. This is predominantly Protestant East Belfast, Newton Arch Road here, a lot of very elaborate murals along here, but in this area is the small Catholic enclave of Short Strand, separated by a so-called peace wall running along one side of Bryson Street, cutting off Madrid Street with a gate, cutting through Lewin Place, which is Loyalist, from the Nationalist Short Strand area, so very small very sharply defined area of short strand. This is the loyalist area of Donegal Pass. In recent years it's been dominated by the UVF. So in 
describing these areas, you've got to think sometimes in terms of which paramilitary group is dominant, not just whether or not they're loyalist. And across the Dublin Road and Bradbury Place, we've got Sandy Row, another traditional Protestant enclave, which traditionally were rivals, actually, of the Donegal Pass, so there was local rivalries within loyalism as well as between loyalists and, and nationalists. This is the Ardoyne Catholic Nationalist Enclave in North Belfast, with Alliance Avenue, the main dividing line. There's a peace wall running behind the backs of these houses right the way up here, dividing loyalists from nationalists. The Holy Cross School is here, Holy Cross Primary School for Girls, and the Catholic girls attending this primary school had to walk up this road to school and they had to run the gauntlet from Alliance Avenue all the way up to the school. They could have gone a long way round, but their traditional way of going to school was the shortest route, and it also became a matter of principle that they had the right to walk on the, the road up here. At the moment, the conventional wisdom is that segregation is getting worse. In fact, we've found from looking at the actual data that it is not necessarily getting worse and worse. Some areas are, but some areas aren't. Some areas are getting better in terms of mixing and less conflict. And in the area of employment, there is less segregation than there used to be. There's a sense in which the territorial borders within Belfast, between loyalist working class areas and nationalist working class areas, act as a proxy for the national border between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic. People can't do much about the border between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic, but they can do something or they feel they can do something about the border at the end of their street. And territory becomes of symbolic importance. And territory lends itself to the zero-sum game that's typical of national conflicts. There is only a finite amount of territory. More for you means less for me. So that fits into the mindset of the people directly involved in these conflicts, zero-sum thinking. So the urban borders are both, in a sense, a proxy for the national border. You can try and extend your territory in Belfast or defend your territory in Belfast as a proxy, and it fits in with the idea of, of territory as being, uh, being finite, subject to zero-sum thinking. Both loyalists and nationalists are quite capable of racist attitudes. On the loyalist side, there are some connections with racist groups from Britain. The far right in Britain has made some inroads into loyalism here in Belfast. The nationalists tend to identify themselves with the oppressed peoples of the world. They see their struggle as having some similarities with third world anti-colonial struggles. Another difference is that the majority of incoming migrants in low paid jobs end up living in loyalist areas for the simple reason that there are more empty houses in loyalist areas because of the differential suburbanization. More Protestant working class people have been decentralized to new housing estates on the outskirts, leaving more space available. And therefore there are more likely to be people of African and Asian origin in loyalist working class areas than in Catholic ones. Some people interpret attacks on immigrants purely as racism. Others say that it is also bound up with loyalist paramilitary control of areas, that any new people coming in are seen as a threat by the paramilitaries. They might not know that you don't go and complain to the police, for instance. They, they may not know the rules of the game, and hence they may be seen as a threat by the paramilitaries to their control of these local areas. <laughs>